Hello guys, it's Letty. Um, I just was pushed to do a video um, regarding this topic of black women coming hard on the black church. So I saw this young lady and I heard a video and she said basically if the black women, the black, the black church profits on the maybe the loneliness of the black woman, the frustration with black women and you know, not whatever. So basically she's saying the black women lead the church, the church is not going to make money, whatever. And I wanted to respond and she says, you know, they don't want us to be love ourselves and this and that. So she had a lot of kind of negative things to say about the church, but I wanted to give a different perspective. Um, I'm not bashing her because that's her experiences. I think all of us can say that we've been to good churches and bad. Um, but what I wanted to say was I have been, a ch I've been a Christian. Let me say to give me a little background. I've been a Christian for 20 years now. Um, I gave my life to the Lord in 2000 and, um, thank the Lord that I, when I first became a Christian, cause it's very, very important. Let me emphasize this. When you first become saved, that you are under good leadership you are at a good church because you really at that point in your life you really need to be under good leadership and i was i had excellent people to guide me to get to the point that i'm at now i'm 20 years walking with god and i couldn't be doing better and i've been through a lot in these 20 years but I've been, I've had God walking right alongside me. So it makes a difference. My self-love, and this lady says that the church is against the self-love of the black woman. I don't know. I feel like my self-love has to do with God. Is He is instrumental in the self-love that I've acquired. Because I don't know prior, I don't know if I had the confidence that I have now. I'm at the point now where I'm I'm older and I've been walking this walk a long time and it's very hard to pull something over on me spiritually. And when I'm go I don't necessarily think that churches are bad, but some churches are just not feeding me whatever for whatever reason. And I might be getting it more from an online source or sometimes um there are, you know, people that I uh, I might phone them and I might get, a, you know, a, a pastor is talking to me on the phone and it, it's really getting to my, it's getting me, it's getting deep into my spirit because I got to be moved inside to feel like, okay, I'm in the right church and it's not music and it's not the, it's the doctrine that I'm hearing because I have to hear word. And a lot of time we go to our churches, our churches are fine. I don't think I've been to any bad churches lately, but maybe they are a little bit too needing the crowd to, to say things and be loud and which is fine if that's what, you know, cause CK, the thing is, is that, um, I know that God is within me. So if a pastor says you need to, I need to hear you, I need to hear you. And God's been so good to you. Why are you not making no noise? I don't need to make noise. I know that God hears me at the level where I'm at right now. It could be a whisper. So that type of stuff, I don't like. I don't like because that that's reminiscent of manipulation, and I don't. I don't like. I'm gonna serve Him the way I do. If I'm louder, if I'm loud, or if I'm not loud, if I'm quiet or loud, I'm gonna serve Him the way I want to. So, you know, I just, I, I disagree with, I disagree with some of what she's saying because I, if I didn't have those, if I didn't have those pastors and those spiritual leaders, when I first started, when I first became a Christian, I wouldn't be at this point now. And I owe them all that. I owe everything to these wonderful, these beautiful leaders. Um, I went to a great church. I went to a church in the beginning of my journey that the pastor was down to earth and he spoke to the people about where they were right at that moment. 
dealing with rejection, dealing with, um, you know, at that time I was a single mom. I was a divorcee. I had a lot of stuff that I was dealing with, trying to go back to school. And he dealt with all of those topics. He said, go where, you know, go where you celebrate, not tolerate it. Go where people are um, rooting for you, not tolerating you. He was amazing. He's, I'm not saying was, he's still alive. <laughs> he is amazing. And I give him so much credit because he, he got me as a baby Christian. You have to have good leadership. Now, whether that leadership is in the church, it could be, in, it could be online. Wherever you get it is fine. I don't go to the church building a lot of times. I'm home because I'm resting. I'm going to be honest with you. By Sunday, I'm exhausted. My week is so busy and I'm, I have so much going on that it's, it, I'm, I'm really tired and I just don't, sometimes I need to sit home and relax and, but that does not, I, every day I get up and I pray to, to the Lord. I have the Lord in my life all the time. Do I go to the church building? No, I haven't been to church in a while. I'll be honest with you. Now, you tell people that and some like, they gasp, you know. I know who I am in Christ, so I don't have to prove nothing to nobody no more. I don't have to, I don't have to prove nothing. When you get to a certain age, honey, you just do your thing. I'm at that age where I don't care what you think. My relationship with Christ is tight. And I would not be the woman that I am if I did not have him. He is the reason why I have self-love. He is the reason why I've been able to survive these 20 years of stuff that I've had to go through. He is the reason. So my take on it is, if you find a good church and it's feeding you, go. If it's not feeding you and you get your, you get your inspiration or whatever, you get it somewhere else. But you definitely need to have it within anyway. Before you go to the church, you got to be having, you got to have him right here. When you have him here, it don't matter what church you go to. You go to the church, it's not feeding you. Oh, I won't go. I won't go back. Or maybe I need to skip this one. Maybe I need to find another one. And it's and you okay with that? Can't nobody manipulate me and say, "Well, you don't go to church. That means there's something wrong with you." It don't mean nothing's wrong. I just don't want to go to church. That don't mean I'm a bad person. You're not my judge, though. Hmm? You have to be strong in the Lord and in in what you believe, what you know of him. Um, your relationship, 90% of your relationship, your Christian walk, is not in that church building. It's in everyday life. When you leave that church building, can you celebrate the Lord in your car? Can you come home and celebrate the Lord? Are you reading your Bible? Are you, do you want to have your hand? You can't have your, you can't be in the world and be in the Bible or, you know, you can't do them both. You're going to have to pick a lane. You got to pick a lane. The world just don't want to accept Christ and that's fine but it ain't going to affect me because God been too good to me he been too good to me to turn my back on him ever and I don't need to go to the church building I can have a I can have a shouting not shouting but um, I can have church right here in my home right here you get up in the morning the first thing I do I don't turn on the news hmm first thing I do when I get up in the morning thank you father thank you lord thank you for getting me up this morning and then people have a problem with that I don't really care I respect the people that are going to church Go to church if that's what you feel you need to do. But don't criticize me because I choose to be home on that day and I'm not going to the church building. 
the church building will probably be okay. They're not going to go bankrupt if my little self is not there. I feel strong in the Lord. But that has to be inside of you before you even go to the church. Black women, I'm going to say this and I'm gone. I had to build myself up and say I'm worthy. My Lord died on the cross for everybody. Yes, I'm a woman that's a single parent at that, at that time. I'm a single parent. I'm a new Christian. And I'm going, I'm going to go back to school and get my degree and do what I need to do to take care of me and my daughter. And I'm going to do it with the Lord, help of the Lord. And I did just that. I completed my degree. I did what I had to do. And we haven't looked back. And I was able to be blessed enough to remarry. And I have a wonderful husband. We're coming on 20 years marriage. We've been together. Probably been a Christian longer than. Because I think I was definitely a Christian a few years into. So I might have been. I might be a Christian. It might be 23 years. It might be even longer. But you know the Lord blessed me with another chance at love. I've been married for 20 years. We're getting ready to celebrate our 20th. Not 20th. I'm sorry. 18th year wedding anniversary. I'm getting my I'm getting my numbers all mixed up. <laughs> yeah, we're getting ready to celebrate our anniversary. We've been through a whole lot in these 18 years. I I promise you. You've been married any length of time, is you're gonna go through some stuff. We both worship God. He gets he's the first in the house. And then everything is under him. That's how you keep a marriage together. That's how you stay, you get that you are, you become a woman of self-love. You become a woman of self-love because you realize you have worth. You're not, your worth is not based on money. I'm going to say this and I'm gone. Your worth, your, your worth is not based on the money you make, the degrees you have, how pretty you are, how curvy your body is, how long your hair is, what texture your hair is, whatever. What job you hold, your worth is that God says that you're worthy. God has given me my worth. I don't have to go to the church building to know that. I go to church with that already in mind. So if Letitia goes there and I'm not happy, I leave. And I don't care. I don't care. Then people want to be gossipy. You got churches with gossipy little people and stuff like. I don't have time for that. We're we're reaching for higher levels of spiritual understanding and what have you. And I don't have time for low brow, low level stuff. This is the growth that has happened over time under direction, under good leadership. But you have to take the you have to take the reins yourself and go off and find your way. Leaders fall. Leaders are flawed. So what are you going to do if your leader has fallen or something has happened with your leadership and you are depending on this person for A, Y, Z. If you don't have it inside of you already, I have it inside of me. I can go to a church. I respect every pastor. I, I, I trust me. I do. They're, you know, you doing the work of the Lord. The ones that are truthfully doing the work of the Lord. God bless you. But I have it inside of me right now. I got it. So you have to find it within yourself before even going to the church building. Self-love, my self-love grew out of the fact that I accepted Christ. Christ told me that I was worth something. Because he took the time. He died on the cross for me. 
That's my worth right there. My worth is, comes from that. And other, other things follow. I don't have to compete anymore with people. I do my thing. I love who I am today. But that has honestly been a lot of good people in my life. A lot of good leaders in my life. There have been a lot of pastors that have spoke to me. Some of them are well known. They're on television. Some of them are in my neighborhood. They were instrumental in getting me to the point where I'm at now. So I cannot not give them credit for that. Because I'm at the point now where I know very well who I am in Christ. And no one can sway me any other way. So that's that was my take on it, guys. Like, comment, subscribe, and um, let me know what you think. Okay, we're done. <laughs> take care. I'm sorry I went on a rant there, but I'm passionate about Christ. I am. Take care. Bye.